New fitness trackers are flooding the market, Twitter's caving and going to allow longer tweets, an app to kill the selfie stick, and hey, we're live from CES a day early in Las Vegas. It's Tuesday, January 5th, and this is Crunch Report. Hey everybody, kind of a madhouse. We were able to sneak in a day early, so things are a little crazy here still, but CES starts tomorrow. We're here today. Speaking of here, which is the former Nokia mapping service that now is owned by Audi and BMW and Daimler, just announced a new cloud-based mapping service for enhancing advanced driver assistance systems, or ADAS, and automated driving features in cars. It's called HD Live Maps. It's essentially for cars, they're gonna drive themselves. Besides things like onboard sensors that self-driving cars already have, very precise maps are still at the heart of all of these self-driving systems. HD Live Maps are cloud-based and include data about permanent infrastructure, that's like how many lanes a highway has, and temporal data about construction and traffic, and even analytical data about how fast actual humans typically drive on any given road. And because the service is cloud-based, let's say a car detects a change to a speed limit through sensors. That car can send the information to the cloud, and then all the other cars in the area get that information, so during cruise control would come in handy, or if there's a lane closed up ahead. If you hate reading Twitter tweet storms, you know what tweet storms are when somebody has something to say and it's way longer than 140 characters and they do it over a series of tweets and it vomits all over your Twitter feed. I may have some good news. Twitter's considering letting users write up to 10,000 characters instead, but still would only show the first 140 in the timeline with a button to reveal the rest if you're interested enough to expand. Recode reports the feature might launch in late Q1 of this year, which would bring Twitter that much closer to the Facebook update format, but would also change the uniqueness of reading or writing a tweet that has to be condensed into 140 characters. And I've always thought that that was part of the fun of Twitter. But Twitter's already moving away from die-hard Twitter users like me with products like Moments, which is designed to make Twitter more easy to understand to newcomers. Well, there are lots of fitness trackers that are gonna be unveiled at CES this week, but let's take a look at a couple that have already been unveiled that we like. Fitbit announced the Fitbit Blaze, which has a customizable accessory option for bands, a color touch screen, and smart notifications to get texts and calls and calendar notifications from a phone. It's $199, which is less expensive than the Fitbit Surge, and that's probably because the company expects you to customize the Blaze and spend a little more. There's no GPS built in, although the watch can still track GPS data provided from a connected phone, and will also include three onboard workouts from Fitstar. That's the workout company that Fitbit acquired in March of last year. You can pre-order the Fitbit Blaze now on Fitbit's website. In other wearable news, Misfit, not to be confused with Fitbit, Misfit, which was acquired by watchmaker Fossil back in November, has unveiled the Misfit Ray, which is a fitness and sleep monitor with a cylinder aluminum body and can be worn as either a bracelet or a necklace. It also integrates with Misfit Link, which is software that lets you control things around you, switching on and off the lights or changing your music, taking a selfie, stuff like that. It's also pretty stylish. It looks more like a bracelet than anything. The Ray has a single multicolor LED, doesn't require charging, and the battery lasts for six months and then you can replace it. Price starts at $100 and is now available at Misfit.com. 2015 was the worst year for tech IPOs since 2009. In fact, just 28 tech companies entered the U.S. public market last year. 2016? already shaping up to be a better one, particularly for biotech companies. One week before JP Morgan Chase's big annual healthcare conference that happens in San Francisco, six companies are getting ready to IPO. You might not recognize some of them, and I'm gonna tell you about them anyway. Audentes Therapeutics is focused on developing and commercializing gene therapy products. Editas Medicine develops treatments to modify disease-causing genetic defects. Corvus Pharmaceuticals develops immuno-oncology therapies. Riata Pharmaceuticals develops protein-based antioxidant inflammation modulators for life-threatening diseases. Syndax Pharmaceuticals is developing an NT-Nostat, that's a cancer inhibitor, as a combination therapy. And Bavaria Nordic is working on vaccines to prevent life-threatening infectious diseases and to treat cancer. Woo! Not exactly hip new products used by all the millennials, but thank goodness for that. You know what you see around the Las Vegas Strip a lot these days, besides those flyers that have naked women on them? Selfie sticks. Trust me, I've been in Vegas three days and I've seen a lot of them. People on vacation love selfie sticks because then they don't have to ask other people to take their picture. But if you don't want to carry a selfie stick with you, an iOS app called Selfie Stick, 
very good, is a free app that detects your face and then lets you take selfies and hands-free photos just by tilting your head, which then triggers the timer. Now, if you're not holding your phone to use the app, you're going to need to prop it up somewhere, at which point maybe you would just want a selfie stick anyway. But alternatives are good, especially when they're free. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. This episode of Crunch Report was presented by Go90. Crunch Report airs every weekday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on TechCrunch.com. We're going to be back on the CES floor tomorrow. Who knows where we'll be, but do say hello if you see us. You can also find us on iTunes and on YouTube. We'll see you tomorrow.